It's the Georgia Bulldogs and the Alabama Crimson Tide in the 2021 SEC Championship game. This is the preview and prediction video for it. Let's get right into it. Wow, this is going to be a good game. In fact, I believe it's going to be a better game than most people are predicting it to be. Over under for this one is 50 points. I actually believe it's going to hit the over. Most people, I'm in the minority here, most people think the under is going to be hit because Alabama's offense hasn't looked that great as of late. Georgia's defense has been amazing. Uh, and their offense has been steady, but not exactly the huge point output. And the fact that Alabama can stop the run, it all makes sense, but I'm going the over. Hunch alone. Georgia's a six and a half point favorite in this game. That seems pretty big, but um, at the same time, it also kind of sounds reasonable. So let's get right into it. I'm rooting for Georgia in this game. Now, Alabama fans, I don't want you to get upset at me. I'm doing that because of a testament of how good Alabama is and how much I respect Nick Saban. As a Michigan fan, we got by Ohio State. We got to get by Iowa. We have a great shot in getting into the college football playoffs. And I don't want our road to be, if Alabama were to win this game, I do not want our road to be having to beat Georgia, big mighty Georgia. I think we'll get walloped in that game and then having to beat Alabama if somehow we do escape past Georgia. No, thank you. I don't want that. I don't want Nick Saban with all that prep work and everything else. So, you know, the less good teams, in my opinion, the better. Some people are like, you got to beat the best to be the best. I mostly agree with that, but, uh, you know, when it plays out like this, I'm not going to root for, I'm not going to root to have to play the best. We already beat Ohio State, and if we beat Georgia in the championship game, that would be enough for me. It's not going to happen, but that would be enough for me. Why is Alabama a six and a half point underdog in this game or a six and a half point dog if you will pun intended there three reasons why number one you got to give props to georgia that georgia defensive front seven has been stellar all season long secondary play has been pretty dang good really they're just a complete team all around stetson bennett has taken care of the football 21 touchdowns compared to just five interceptions he's averaging like 9.5 yards per completion so a lot of people think they look at his numbers and see the lack of yardage put up, but when he has to, he clearly can throw the ball deep. He just hasn't had to very often. Stetson Bennett is the quarterback that you need at Georgia this season with how historically good that defense is. That defense, in my opinion, uh, you got the 2019 LSU offense. The Georgia Bulldogs this season on defense are the 2021 version of that LSU offense. So flip the side of the football and you have historically, monumentally excellent in that regard. Georgia, just a steady football team and the offense, again, they do everything they need to do to complement the defense, which is just stellar. Number two, in my opinion, why Alabama is a six and a half point dog in this game is that the offense, to really no fault of their own, is because of injuries, has become one-dimensional completely. They lost center Darian Dalcourt. Uh, he was injured in the LSU game. They have not been the same since. Their, their offensive line was already down in comparison to past years at Alabama. That made it even worse. And we're going to get into it. Bryce Young has been sacked lately and rushed and pressured. And now you're having to face Georgia's really good, as I said, historically good defense. Uh, there's a lot of problems there. There's a lot of issues there. You got running back Trey Sanders. He had the Liz Frank injury back back in 2019. Then he had the car accident. Definitely rooting for him to get better. I'm somebody that's torn both of my ACLs, so I know how that can go. I know how injuries can be just, uh, you're never the same. You're never the same, depending on the injury. You know, these are these are some serious things that he's gone through. And now I just don't see him having the same oomph that he once had. As if things weren't already difficult enough and it wasn't already an uphill battle, now you have Brian Robinson who just got injured, a lower body injury, up against the Auburn Tigers in the Iron Bowl. And he's your leading rusher this year. He's been phenomenal 207 carries 1016 yards 4.9 yards per carry and 14 touchdowns man knows how to find pay dirt that's for sure so you know those two are two reasons the third reason is Alabama just really hasn't looked great their ceiling has been absolutely exceptionally high when they do look great and when they are clicking on all cylinders but there's just been too many games where Alabama has sputtered and hasn't looked good and you can't really say that for their opposition this week Georgia has most looked good every single game of the year. It feels like Georgia against the rest of y'all, as Dabo Sweeney would say, this season. We'll see how that goes. But what keeps Alabama in the game? Clear and simple. One, obviously Nick Saban, and we'll get into that more later. But 
other thing is Bryce Young. I mean, the man is number one in the Vegas odds of winning the Heisman Trophy, probably rightfully so because we talked about all these deficiencies with the offensive line and the running game. That makes it very difficult on a quarterback to get things going, but here he is, 3,901 yards on the season, 40 touchdowns to just four interceptions. Somehow, even with all that pressure and everything else, the man is smart with the football, throws it away when he needs to, does everything he has to do, especially for a freshman, 68.9% completion percentage, 288 out of 418 this season. It's just amazing how well he's performing with all he is going through. What's he going through? Let's look at this, this last game against Auburn. Sacked seven times, pressured 11 times. Unbelievable. That's the most this season. That There's a reason why Auburn was winning that game late and was able to get to him. Four times against Arkansas, four times against LSU, and four times against Texas A&M. What do all four of those games have in common? Well, those are the games that they either lost when we're talking about Texas A&M or games that they were really, really down to the wire and in a lot of trouble in. A lot of trouble. So, you know, Georgia now has to find a way to get to Bryce Young and rattle him because he really is Alabama's only hope offensively in this game. A lot of people have Georgia winning this big, possibly. You know, they're favored by six and a half, but some people think they could really run away with it, win by 10 or more points, which I would regard as running away with it in the SEC championship game against West versus East and, and just uh, how good these two teams are. I would consider a 10-point win kind of running away with it, depending on how it all plays out. Because they've had common opponents and... Uh, the common opponents, when you're comparing them, it just doesn't look good for Alabama. Let's start with Florida. Bama beat them 31 to 29. What did Georgia do? 34 to 7. Alabama was uh, biting their nails in that game towards the end. They were really comfortable and uh, almost lost in the end. Tennessee, they looked better. They won 52 to 24, but. Need I remind you that it was 21 to 14 at the half. It was 24 to 17 going into the fourth quarter. It was a one touchdown game against Tennessee going into the fourth quarter. Tennessee's better this season. Hendon Hooker has looked pretty decent, but uh, Georgia beat them 41 to 17. Arkansas, Alabama won 42 to 35. Georgia beat them 37 to nothing. Good Lord, that is a molly whop, and if I've ever heard one. And then finally, the opponent in Auburn, 24 to 22, Alabama wins. Georgia wins 34 to 10. But guess what? If you follow this channel all season long, I don't believe, especially in 2021, that transitive property is the end-all be-all. And like I said, particularly this season, it is not proven to be the case most of the time. So I don't think it's that big of a deal, honestly. But with all that's going against Alabama, with everything that I just said that looks bad for their sake, what do they have going in their favor? Number one, they're seventh in total defense. They only give up 213.6 yards per game against the pass. They're 42nd against the pass, but even more more so, and this is going to be the biggest thing that helps them in this game. They are fourth against the run, 2.42 yards per carry, 80.6 yards per a game. And on top of that, Georgia's offense, rushing the ball and passing the ball, it's been good, but again, like I said earlier, they've just mostly been steady. In terms of the rushing game, this is actually a down year for Georgia. They're still 25th in the nation, and this is where we're getting at with number two, is that Georgia's offense isn't exactly this, like, they've been good, but they've mostly done what they need to do. They're not this huge, like, powerhouse, like, you know, score them up, bang, bang kind of offense. Uh, they are rushing the ball at 5.39 yards per carry, 202 points. One yards per game. Again, very good, but not great for Georgia standards in the past. And then passing the ball, they haven't had to do much of it. Setson Bennett's been out a lot of times in the second half with the games being in hand. They're 60th passing the ball with just 240.2 yards per game. So Alabama, the great equalizer in this scenario, is going to be stopping the run for Georgia and seeing just how good. Stetson Bennett actually is. He's taking care of the football, 21 touchdowns to five interceptions, but how good is he when he needs to make that third down conversion in the SEC championship game against a very well-coached, very talented Alabama football team? And then number three is the Nick Saban and Bryce Young factor that I went over. Uh, Nick Saban and Bryce Young factor. It's huge. It's a big deal. It is an absolutely big deal. You can never downplay it. Uh, if anybody's going to be able to find a way to pull off this game, it is Nick Saban. Been, and if any quarterback this season is going to find a way to pull off this game, it is Bryce Young. Now, let's look at the numbers to see how many yards we think Georgia's going to get in this game. Because we got a sample size, guys. This is one of the best things about previewing one of these kind of games this late into the season is because 
you are what you are at this point. There's 12 games into the season, so averages usually pan out pretty well. Georgia passing offense, I said 240.2 yards per game, and the rushing offense is 202.1 yards per game. Alabama's passing defense is giving up 213.6, and Alabama's rushing D is giving up 80.6 yards per game. So if all that clashes, it combines, and averages out, Georgia will have 227 passing yards in this football game, and they'll have 141 running yards. They'll get a total of 360 yards. That's pretty good, but it's not outstanding. It definitely gives Alabama a shot. A shot. Because Bryce Young, if his averages play out, he's averaging 341.8 yards per game by himself, passing the football. Obviously, I don't think he's going to get that here in this game, but I do think he's going to be better than people think. I really do. I think he's going to show up. Freshmen these days, man, they have ice in their veins. They don't worry about this kind of stuff. We're in a different era. We're in a different uh, generation here. These guys are on TikTok and everything else. They got ice in their veins, baby. Sheesh, they don't care. All right, one of the last things we're going to look at, Georgia has not faced a Bryce Young this season. In fact, most teams haven't, unless you've already faced Alabama. Again, Alabama's passing offense, number seven in the nation at 341.8 yards per game. Let's look at Georgia's schedule and see just how terrible the offensive passing games have been for their schedule because this is where I try to tell people, I think Alabama has a better shot than people think because Georgia... While they look good, it's clear and comp I mean, it doesn't necessarily at some point matter who you play. It just look how dominant they've been. You got to take that into an account. But the passing offenses have not been good, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do against Bryce Young, somebody who can pass the ball. Again, like I said, it might not matter because the fact that Alabama's rushing game is just depleted at this moment and Georgia's rushing defense is good, but let's look into it. Clemson, number 104 in the nation at 191.5 yards per game. UAB, number 91 at 207.8 yards per game. South Carolina, number 96 at 197.8. Vandy, number 105 at 189.3. Are you seeing a trend here? The best out of these first four games was number 91 in the nation. There's only 130 teams in this uh, in Division I football here. Arkansas, number 74 at 223.6. Auburn, number 59 at 241.1 per game. Kentucky, number 72 at 225. Florida, number 39 at 261.1. Missouri, number 66 at 232.3. Tennessee, number 55 at 247 yards per game passing the ball and Georgia Tech number 95 at 198.3. Wow. I mean, a lot of teams could do a lot of damage uh, defending the pass against those horrid, terrible passing offenses. The best passing offense they've faced all season is number 39, Florida, at 261.1 yards per game. That is 80 yards lower per game that, than Bryce Young averages with Alabama. And the average offense that they've played passing the football is number 78. That's 71 slots lower than number 7, where Alabama is passing the football at 220 yards a game, which is 122 yards less than where Bryce Young and Alabama is. So you're talking on average, they're going up against the 78th ranked offense, passing the ball in 220 yards per game. That is not, that is not Bryce Young tested at this point. The problem with that, the problem with that is, and I don't have enough time and nor am I going to get enough views for me to um, warrant putting all those stats on here as well. But the problem with that is, in the same way that Georgia hasn't seen a Bryce Young, Bryce Young hasn't seen a Georgia defense. And nobody has except for the teams that they have played. So I bet if I did the same thing with Georgia's defense and their numbers, I bet it would look, uh, I bet it would be equally as telling that Bryce Young hasn't faced somebody like Georgia. So there's that. For you Georgia fans, that's where that's where you know it kind of clashes and meets in the middle there. So, with all that said, what is my prediction for this game? Listen, most people have it one way or the other, and I'm actually pretty shocked at it. Again, six and a half points is what Georgia is favored by. Most people think that if Georgia's going to win, they're going to win by 10 points or more, and they're going to win pretty emphatically. They've been the better team all season, and they're going to prove it in this football game. The other end of the spectrum is a lot of people think that if Alabama covers, that means they're going to win the football game. That means that Georgia, maybe people have that in their brain that Georgia just can't get over that Alabama hump. I believe they can because I'm a Michigan fan and we got over our hump. Uh, a lot of people think they can't get over that Alabama hump and if they don't cover the spread, they're going to 
lose by, you know, three or whatever. So people just kind of seem to be on one end of the spectrum or the other. Me, I'm in the middle again. On the fence here. In the middle, here's how I think this game's going to play out. I believe it's going to be 27 to 17 at one point in the game, maybe like four or five minutes left in the fourth quarter. I think Georgia's going to be steadily, kind of slowly but surely, doing the boa constrictor approach, which is what usually Alabama is great at doing. And then I think Alabama's going to score late with a touchdown, make it very interesting. They may even get the ball back with limited time on that last drive, but I think Georgia's defense would hold strong in that scenario. I'm going to go 27 to 24. This is a game where if you said it's going to be 27 to 17, you got a great shot at saying, look at me, I was right. And if you're like me and you say 27 to 24, you got a great shot at saying, look at me, I was right. And everybody's like, oh, everybody's going to brag. I was right. I was right. Listen, it's one of those games where <laughs> it's just that late touchdown. Is it going to happen or not? That'll be the difference maker between it, it over under in this scenario or, you know, who's right and who's wrong technically. I mean, why can't we just all give each other credit if it was like in that scenario that we were both looked pretty good and one person just kind of got the, the edge in the long run at the end. Either a touchdown wasn't scored or a touchdown was scored. Over-under is going to hit. Like I said, that's 51 points. That's one point over the over-under that is set at 50. Georgia's going to win the football game. And my top four going into this week will probably be Georgia, Michigan, Cincinnati, Oklahoma State. I kind of see it like that. I could see them jumping Oklahoma State over. But listen, a lot can happen. Don't count out Houston in that Cincinnati game. Don't count out Baylor in that Oklahoma State game. There's just a, Don't count out Iowa in the Michigan game. Don't count out anybody. This is championship week. This is where winners are bred. This is really the first round of the playoffs right here, right now. And it's Alabama versus Georgia. You guys have the floor. Can't wait to watch it. It's going to be an excellent one. Take care, guys. God bless. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content because I need some Alabama and Georgia fans. I got lots of Michigan and Ohio State fans. I need some of you guys to come along. Please, please, if you enjoyed it. Take care, guys. God bless.